Help is on the way for millions of Americans after President Trump signs a COVID-19 relief bill. What this means for your wallet. Another important step in the fight against COVID-19 today is vaccines roll out at long-term care facilities. Plus, have Arizona scientists crack the code on why some people get sick and others don't. 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, website, and YouTube. Hello, it's Rachel here. Let's start with a look at our latest coronavirus numbers. The State Department of Health Services reported more than 10,000 new cases, bringing the total number of cases in Arizona over 500,000. There were also 42 new deaths reported this morning. Officials say the number of new cases is higher than usual today because multiple case reviews were completed on Sunday. Those numbers could continue to fluctuate as health experts expect to see another surge in COVID cases following holiday travel and gatherings. The TSA says it screened more than a million people on Saturday. The day before Christmas Eve, they screened even more people, making it the heaviest travel day since the pandemic began. A major change to keep in mind, new travel restrictions go into effect today. Passengers coming from the UK will need a negative COVID test within 72 hours of boarding a flight. The good news is 2 million Americans have received their first dose of the coronavirus vaccine. Here in Maricopa County, more than 24,000 vaccines have been given to healthcare workers. That's up nearly 1,000 from just yesterday. Today marks another important step in the fight against COVID-19. People living in nursing homes and assisted living facilities across Arizona are set to begin receiving vaccinations. Team 12's Matt Uris has more on how this process will work. That's right, this really is important stuff. CVS employees will be making multiple visits to every long-term health care facility in our state. This is all part of that phase one approach. Their task to administer the Moderna vaccine, which requires two separate doses. As of right now in Arizona, we're at around 900 facilities that we'll be giving vaccinations to. Workers will visit each facility three times. The second and third trips will be to administer second doses to patients and to make sure no one is overlooked. Tobin Zadarko is the regional director for CVS Health. He talked about why this is so important. I think the biggest thing for me, and I think why this initiative itself is so important, I have a 93-year-old grandmother who no one in my family has been able to see since March. This is all part of phase one of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout which focuses on protecting frontline healthcare workers and the most vulnerable. And it's one of those things that hopefully by getting this vaccine into these long-term care facilities, people like my grandma are gonna be able to see their family again. And I think that's just really, really important. There will be 28 days between doses, making this a roughly two month operation in which 163,000 patients are vaccinated free of charge. 99% of care facilities in Arizona opted in. And once they get there, obviously we're following very strict PPE standards. This indirectly benefits everyone in their fight against COVID-19. Experts say that 85% of the population must receive the vaccine in order for herd immunity to be achieved. One final note here, the general public isn't expected to have access to the vaccine for another couple of months. In Scottsdale, Matt Yurus, 12 News. Well, as many of us wait to get a vaccine, a third one could soon be approved. Drug company AstraZeneca is working with health leaders in the UK to get the green light on its version of the vaccine. This one is showing to be 70% effective. Regulators are reviewing the final data from AstraZeneca's clinical trials and could make a decision on Thursday. Well, over the past nine months of the pandemic, scientists have learned a lot about the virus, but one mystery still plagues doctors and patients. Why do some people have mild cases while others become so sick they could die? Team 12's Colleen Sakura spoke with Arizona researchers who may have uncovered the secret. Hundreds of thousands of Arizonans it's a tough fight. have battled COVID-19 like Chris Paddock. I felt really tight in the chest where I couldn't take a deep breath. Paddock started noticing symptoms last Wednesday and went to Honor Health Deer Valley. Took me in immediately because my oxygen level started dropping. In the COVID-19 unit for a week, Paddock says he received remdesivir and antibody treatment to help him, trying to stay positive after losing family members of his own to the virus. You either stabilize, you get better, or it gets worse. And it's this wide range of outcomes that's having scientists look deeper. We wouldn't be in this mess if it was like every other virus. Dr. Nicholas Shork with TGen is leading a team of researchers looking at what's called MIR-1307. 
It's a molecule made by DNA that turns genes on and off. So what we found is that MIR-1307 appears to interact with the virus, and now we're trying to figure out whether that's a good thing or a bad thing for the human host. Think of it like a dimmer switch. They believe, depending on how much someone has, will affect how sick they get with COVID. They're still researching whether MIR-1307 helps or hurts someone with the virus, but science has shown it's played a part in other diseases, like certain cancers and H1N1. Oftentimes, these amounts of substances like MIR-1307 vary from tissue to tissue. As Paddock continues healing, he's left thinking of those who are still in the worst of their battle. You could just hear other people, other patients in other rooms is coughing, gasping, and, you know, almost fight for their lives, too. Colleen Sikora, 12 News. With new information coming out every day, we know it can be tough to keep up. You can find the latest details about the coronavirus and how it's affecting Arizona on the free 12 News app. Well, big changes today on the weather front. It's cold, it's windy, and could we actually see some rain? Crystal, give us the forecast 411. I know we're all rooting for rain, aren't we? It may only be enough to put polka dots on your car, but yes, so we are looking at the potential for some rain here, and we're getting with the program already along the western edge of our state here. It's just some light rain with snowflakes thrown into that mix, and as we pull in that potential for more showers later on today, the winds are already causing commotion out ahead of it. Gusting from the south and southwest in the 20s and the 30s in our mountain zones right now. We have a bit of a breeze picking up in Phoenix and we're stirring up those winds in the old Pueblo right now. We could really see those winds jump up between 40 and 60 miles an hour in this wind advisory zone, which stretches from Flagstaff to the New Mexico border and north of Rim Country. Let's get going with our latest future cast, see how things shake out for us. We'll see showers really take over the Northland here later on this afternoon into the evening. Could even get a dot, ah, see it, near the valley for some rainfall there. Snow levels will work their way down to their lowest overnight into the morning hours where you could see the storm system has more showers up its sleeve for us tomorrow morning potentially in the afternoon we can get in on some additional last minute showers even in the valley don't expect much though less than a tenth of an inch is uh, pretty much in the cards for us and that's about it the lowest snow level could get down to 4,000 feet but you're going to see those totals at 5,000 feet and higher anywhere from a trace to three inches maybe a few favorable spots getting in on a half a foot of snow but that would be the exception not the norm and it may not even be enough to take us out of the top ranks for the driest year on record for Flagstaff and Page right now securing that top spot. We'll be keeping a close eye on that. But after this storm system makes its departure tomorrow, skies are going to brighten up. And boy, are we going to be feeling the cold starting tomorrow. A high of only 58 in the valley. Temperatures will be tumbling down into the 30s overnight. Hashtag most clicked. Here are the stories piquing everyone's interest right now. Number one, President Trump averted a government shutdown, signing the $2.3 trillion COVID relief package. The move unlocks $900 billion in coronavirus-related aid, including hundreds of billions of dollars to small businesses, billions for vaccine distribution and testing, and $600 payments to Americans. Last week, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said we can expect to receive those checks in just a few days after the bill becomes law. The signed deal also restarts additional unemployment benefits and comes with a new round of small business loans. Number two, a deadly shooting involving Phoenix police. Investigators tell us officers shot and killed a 47-year-old woman overnight near 27th Avenue and Indian School. Before the shooting, police reported hearing gunfire in the area and found a woman nearby. We're told she pointed a gun at officers who then opened fire, hitting her. She later died at the hospital. No officers were injured. Full House actor Lori Loughlin has been released from prison. She spent two months behind bars after being convicted in a large college admission scandal for paying half a million dollars in bribes to get her two daughters into college. Loughlin is now expected to complete 100 hours of community service. In other news, hiking trails across Arizona got a lot of use this year, but which ones saw the most foot traffic? Team 12's Erica Stapleton shows us the top buzzworthy trails in the valley. Arizona has some of the top hiking trails in the country, and some of the best are right here in the valley. We're going to break down the top 10. Let's check them out. Trekking in at number 10, Dreamy Draw Nature Path. 
living up to its name with some dreamy views. Great weather, Sunday hike. And there's more to see. Numbers nine and eight, the Mormon Trail at South Mountain and the Apache Wash Loop at the Sonoran Preserve. And you won't want to miss number seven. It's missing pieces, part of the charm. Hole in the Rock at Papago Park. The views up here are like spectacular. Look out for number six, it's Lookout Mountain. And then it's back to South Mountain for number five, the Pima West Loop. And number four is a valley icon. Camelback. Obviously Camelback Mountain. Camelback is great. That's right, the Echo Canyon Trail at Camelback Mountain. Certainly popular, but not as much foot traffic as some others. But it's hard to park there sometimes. Which brings us to number three, treading back to South Mountain for the Dirt Road Trail. And don't let that name fool you. It's a sight to see. Just like number two on the other side of the city, North Mountain. This is a 360 view when you get to the top. Speaking of top, climbing up at last to number one. I do it a lot. It happens to be our like favorite. It takes the breath away. But it's great work. With more than 330,000 people hitting the Summit Trail in 2020. I come here every week. I'm actually training for Mount Everest. Piestawa Peak, a clear fan favorite from the bottom. It's just so raw. All the way to the top. It's just a different type of beauty. Time now for the look ahead. The stories you'll be talking about a little later today. Days after an explosion rocked Nashville on Christmas Day, investigators are still trying to piece together a motive. We'll have the latest on the investigation. Plus, important information for pet owners. Online posts claim a festive holiday plant you might have in your own home is toxic to dogs. Our Verify team breaks it down. That's your 12 at 12, the facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes. No commercials. We're always on anywhere, anytime on 12news.com, the 12 News app, and on our socials as well.